Hi everybody, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada, and you're watching Cars and Crosby. We've got a mixed bag episode. We're gonna call this a lot update. We've got a lot of things on the go right now. A lot of people right now are either getting rid of their fun summer toys or they're they're seeing the market that they have right now and they're trying to take advantage of that. And I'm all game. I'm here. I want to get your stuff. And I'm also having a lot of GM products that are starting to come finally in. And I say finally, I'm not, it's not a dig on GM. I know that they're doing a good job, but I'm really happy to see that we're getting a lot of stuff. I got this CT4V here that just arrived from, from our Lansing plant. We also had some Camaros that arrived. A lot of pickup trucks. That's something also that we've been seeing a lot of. And then we got this. This here is something else. Customer uh, wanted to get rid of it because they had another vehicle coming in. I actually also might have a second one coming in. And the person said, the fuel is too much. I can't, I can't handle the fuel. And I just, I find that really fascinating because the fuel was already bad before it went up, you know, 20, 30 cents a gallon. Uh, but now all of a sudden it's, it's a point of contention. And I, I don't know if that was the real reason why they got rid of it or um, if it was just because, you know, I don't know. I haven't even driven this thing yet, but this Ram is something else. And I always like to try to take a look at the best of the best from another company because you'll see a lot of things that maybe your company hasn't gone in a direction on. And the first thing that I wanted to point out were their lights all throughout the front. That's something that we don't have in our GM products. And I don't mind that idea until a stone comes along and hits it. I don't really know at the end of the day how much that's going to, improve the quality but i've always noticed that about dodge and, and ram and uh, stellanus or stellaris is that they really come out with a lot of cool ideas that you would want to tell somebody about at a party but when you go to pay for this vehicle it doesn't really translate into something that you would really want to make you feel like you've got your money's worth on and i'm not trying to make this a hit against ramrods but like i just find with like when i looked at the jeep wagoneer for example there was a lot of great ideas but they really didn't do anything to make your overall experience better. And that's always something that I've noticed. It's a really fun brand. There's a lot of fun things that are with it. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that when it comes to the actual person that's paying for it, for $120,000 Canadian, $100,000 American, I don't know what these do and what this is gonna do improve. But that's, it. That's, that's all I'm gonna say about that. I wanna see what's underneath the hood here. I've heard that there's a really cool Easter egg which kind of goes with why this thing is called a T-Rex. I didn't really, I, I, I've watched a lot of Jurassic Park, but I didn't know that T-Rexes love to eat Velociraptors. Someone told me that it's underneath here. Oh, it is there. Wow, look at that. There is a T-Rex eating a Velociraptor. That is quite a shot against Ford. I, you don't normally see that where somebody really puts that big of a hit against another competitor and directly puts it on their their vehicle on for everyone to see. Kudos to Dodge for being that confident in this vehicle. I, I honest to God, um, gotta give Dodge props for their interiors. Thankfully, we actually have our redesigned interior coming in March. I'm, I'm very happy to note that I am gonna be getting one of those. I'm gonna trade in the Escalade. And um, I'm thinking I'm gonna do the Ultimate Denali, but I, I could be convinced to do the AT4X if people think that that's the one to get. I'm basically gonna leave it up to you guys. If you guys think that there's one truck in particular that you want me to do more reviews on, I will get that one over the other one. I, I'm really indifferent at this point. I think they're both great. I'm leaning towards the Denali just because I did the AT4 last time and I'm obviously not an off-roading type of individual. so. To me, I don't think I could take advantage of that as much as I could show off the creature comfort features on the Denali more. Um, so I'll let you guys decide. We'll, we'll do a little bit of a vote on that. One thing I want to look at, and I promised that I wouldn't talk about it anymore, but I have to look. I just want to see what the fuel economy on this thing is after 3,000 kilometers. It's got a really nice exhaust note. I, I'm going to note that right off the bat. That to me... Those are, those are big pipes, dual pipes. Nice little cold start there. Okay. It's averaging 25 liters per hundred kilometers. I'm not even gonna try to figure out where I could convert that. Uh, let's see. I'm not even gonna try. 25 liters per hundred kilometers. 
I don't know what that is in miles per gallon, but I feel like it's really bad. Um, so, uh, well, I guess this is this is the the TRX. It's got a cool suede area in here. In particular, I've always noted that that's something that over the test of time is really going to wear out and not do that well because it's a it's a more vulnerable area that you're putting in a high wear area. And you'll see actually on something that I have in the showroom why I think that um, if you are going to have a high wear area that you 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 double down and you make it a lot more durable than it needs to be in that specific area. So you'll see that. Harlan Charles did an interview with Steve Garrett on Corvette Today. Really great podcast uh, today on the Z06 or Z06. Um, I'm really at a point right now where I'm, I don't have FOMO. I'm, I, I am obviously jealous that there's a lot of people that have gone out and seen it, but I'm at the point now where I can't ignore how badly I want to learn about this, especially because I want to start looking at the design component of it. And in particular, I want to look at all the folks that are like me that have a Stingray and want to take some of the cool things that are from the Z06 and put it on their Stingray. I have already said openly that I'm not going to be getting a Z06. I have my name down for the E-Ray or the Grand Sport or whatever that might be. And so in order to keep me pacified while I'm waiting for that model, there's a lot of interesting things that are on the Z06 that I'm going to be trying to be the guinea pig on for you guys and seeing what you could do to retrofit onto your vehicle, just like I did with my C7. If you guys, um, I wouldn't have had the channel back then, but I, I put Grand Sport parts and Z06 parts on my C7. So the grill from my Corvette was is a Grand Sport grill. I had Grand Sport intakes on the sides um, that I did as well. And those were just things that I thought, you know what, they put it on a higher level model I like it, I wanna put it on mine. And so I'm gonna show you ways that you can do that. That's one of the biggest reasons why I'm excited about starting to learn more about this Z06 is because there's gonna be a lot of cool design things that I'm not saying GM dropped the ball on, but that interior in particular, that stealth interior, that's something that I really wanna have on mine. As soon as you see it, you can't get it out of your head and you and you wanna try you to whatever you can to get it done. And then some of the aero stuff, I don't have carbon fibre as my um, design queue so I really don't have to worry about that I kind of dodged a bullet with not having to worry about upgrading it in that realm but there's gonna be people out there that want to do that and I'm gonna help you out in trying to do that so let's go inside and show you what I've got in the inside of the uh, showroom in here I was just getting ready to show you guys the inside of uh, our showroom but we got a load of trucks which is always something that I want to talk about in this day and age because this has really been the highlight of what GM is producing right now and um, there's a couple of things in particular that I want to know. In terms of the ETAs on trucks or anything right now, I have to tell you that GM is not doing as good of a job as they have in the past on making it transparent about where they are. I have the same China tracking system that I do when I'm following the Corvettes. And for some reason with this chip shortage, it's made it so that when you're trying to find a vehicle, it's a lot harder to do. And um, I'm only talking about this because I like to talk about things that I know they can improve on. And it's not something that I have, a, you know, a fear that they're going to not be able to produce a result for. But I just want to note that right now, guys, if I tell you that you have a truck on order and I, and I don't know where it is, and then all of a sudden I call you and say that it's showing up, it's not me. I promise you, I check this thing all the time, almost to a little bit of a creepy level in terms of how many times I'm doing it. But you know what? You get your coffee, you uh, you have your coffee, you got a routine. Every single time that I'm having a meal or something like that, I'm gonna check it and it almost becomes subconscious. I don't know if any of you guys have ever been in uh, the position where you're purchasing real estate, but you kind of get into a routine of always checking up when you have a little bit of a break time. And that's kind of what I've been doing with the tracking system is, you know, about four or five times a day. I know I'm gonna be having a coffee when I first get in. I know I'm gonna have a bite to eat at lunch. Those are the times that I'm always just checking up. So where I'm going with this is that if you have something on order with me and I haven't told you anything about it, it's because I don't have anything to update you on. And it's frustrating because I'm the one that's trying to get you information and I'm not getting that information. GM's invested into a really great piece of technology to think that I can communicate and track this vehicle from you know wherever it's being built in North America and sometimes even overseas is pretty remarkable. And it seems to me like this is an easy layout for GM to be able to fix and to look like a hero on, especially when we're dealing with such a major um, 
supply constraint shortage right now and the number one conversation that I'm talking to people about is where's my vehicle or when's my vehicle gonna be coming. So hope GM's listening to this. I'm, I'm sure that they already have a team on that. And if you are one of my clients, I apologize, it's not me. I'm not trying to negate your, your order or neglect you. It is just the way the cookie crumbles right now. And that's you know a lesson that you can explain and, and use for a lot of different situations in life. So let's go inside. Let's talk about some sunshine and rainbows. I've got a full showroom in here and I wanna show you a new Corvette. All right. So, got a time machine here, time capsule, sorry. This here is a 3LT coupe, non-Z51, in torch red. We've got a lot to talk about with this one. I didn't design this one, but again, somebody decided that they wanted to get rid of it. They'd only driven it for 256 glorious kilometers. And then they said, you know what? We're going down south to Florida, they're, they're snowbirds. I wanna get rid of it and I have another one on order. So I'm very happy to report that people are contacting us from different dealerships and, and offering them to us and we're gladly um, interested in taking them. We'll happily oblige to getting any Corvettes possible. As you can see in here, we don't mess around when it comes to performance stuff. So let's, let's unpack this one. There's a lot to talk about. I wanted to wait until it was a bright sunny day. I tried filming this last night at 5.30 p.m. and it was already pitch black thanks to it being winter. So from the back end here, we can see already right away that this is a non-Z51. My suggestion to anybody that would be purchasing this from me would be to either put a low profile spoiler on there or put just the regular Z51 spoiler to kind of help balance it out. Now the wheels that are on here are a polished Trident spoke. I have a little bit of a point of contention with that because you'll notice that we have the chrome badging on here, but they've gone with the carbon flash badging on the back. So what we need to do is kind of make this more of a consistent design language and either change the badging and the script to the chrome badging or to maybe change these wheels around in order to go with the rest of the vehicle. Because as it stands right now with you having these black accents and carbon flash metallic and also this lovely top, which we're gonna talk about, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, if I look into the back of the Corvette, you're also gonna see that the top that's in here means that this has got a two top option or a C2M option. This is a heavy hitter item. This is something that you definitely want to um, take note of because it's not something that you see every day and it does come with a bag to protect your exposed carbon fiber top that comes in here. Now you guys know how I feel about when you buy a heavy hitter item and then don't go along with it so I'm not going to go too much onto that but thankfully they did put the carbon fiber grill inserts on here so we do have some consistency with this build. You also note that the mirror caps are an option that you can get easily done. It's not a major upgrade. So if you're wanting to continue with that theme, you have that ability. And then this top is a transparent top. It looks like it's black from the outside, but when I go onto the inside of the vehicle, you'll note that it is quite transparent. And you'll also notice that they've done a really good job at filtering out the UV because these things in particular um, get very opaque and start to crack because of the UV light when you um, have them for a while. I'm looking at C5s in particular just because of their age and seeing some of them. And uh, it's something that I'm hoping that over the, the, the test of time, they can improve with this, this new design. Now for the seats, this is a competition seat. It does have adrenaline red as the accents. It's a 3LT, so you'll notice that there's beautiful red stitching uh, all throughout it. And this is done because it has the competition seat option. So if you're wanting to get the red stitching on here, it is a nice little um, hack or um, ability to be able to get a little bit nicer of interior without having to choose that option because you did choose the competition seat. Um, you'll notice that it has the high performance textile, or as I like to call it, Nomex that's in here. This is to make sure that um, when you're moving around inside the seat with these aggressive bolsters, which you can adjust right here, that you're not wearing out the leather. This is a very high wear area. And so they want to make sure that they can prolong the life of these seats by putting in a textile that will resist the wear and tear a lot more. Um, on a side note, I do want to talk about the interview with Harlan Charles that um, they did uh, on Corvette Today. One of the things in particular that I really am starting to note that I want to start looking at uh, retrofitting on C7s, or sorry, C8s, 
Stingrays is the, the stealth package. I think in particular, that's a really great option and it really shows when, you, when you're looking at these interiors, how much the, the aluminum faces on here uh, contrast and stand out. I think it would have been a smart option to put the carbon fiber in here, but there are some companies that I'm seeing like C8 trims that will be able to retrofit this. So there's a lot of solutions that I have in mind for people if they're looking at changing around uh, a, a product that they didn't order for themselves. And so that's in particular um, really something that I'm interested in trying to help people out with. And, you know, I, I don't want to always look at the guy that's trying to hack and turn something into a Frankenstein. It's more trying to, you know, attribute it or equip it to your lifestyle. And there's a lot of really reasonable options out there for you to be able to do it. So 257 kilometers. This thing is essentially brand new. I'm really excited about this in particular because it is brand new. There is not a lot of use on it, which means that you can technically have a new car experience. And just like I was mentioning in another video, they have 0% financing on used Corvettes right now. When you finance a new Corvette, it's 5%. So this thing has been driven for 256 kilometers. And if you wanted to purchase it, it's now going to be at 0%. And that to me in particular, almost offsets all of the premium that the market is bearing right now in terms of cost you know, the market adjustment. I'm not proud of the fact that there's dealerships out there that are doing it on brand new vehicles. I've always said that we won't be doing it, but unfortunately we've got to be on the same page as everyone else when it comes to the market and the, and the adjustments. If you want to wait two years and join my list, you're more than welcome to. If you're wanting to purchase one right now, that's almost brand new or technically on paper is used, but it feels like it's brand new. I have that ability to do it and I can offset most of the interest that would have incurred if you financed a new vehicle by buying this one and doing it at 0%. Just gonna do a little quick run through and reminder of some of them, actually, you know, let's, let's not forget about this little bug. My dad bought this, actually. This is my father's bug. He uh, bought it off of a guy leaving the gym. It's a 1966 beach buggy, or dune buggy, or I don't know what you would call it. It's got no airbags. It's got no seat belts. I didn't feel safe selling this on Kijiji on my own just because of the liability involved with not having any safety restraints but it's a really cool eclectic model and um, got a nice patina on it too. So this is something that we have for sale here as well. We've already talked about this one a little bit on the channel. I've got a ZL1 over here. If you want some nice horses and a manual transmission, this is gonna be your best bet. And I have a little bit of a deja vu going on because I've got a second black ZL1 with almost the same amount of kilometers. I think this one's got nine and the other one's got six. And then we have our black 3LT over here. We've got our 2LT coupe, and then we have our manual seven speed, our manual seven speed in the two middles here on the C7s. And then we've got the twin to mine that's in an automatic over here. So I'm pretty proud of this interior. I still got a couple more spaces. If you guys know anybody that has a Corvette that they're looking to get rid of, I will hand you a finder's fee because I've got, as you can see, about two or three more spaces that I need to fill up in this dealership's um, showroom before I, I, uh, I call it a day. And, you know, pack it in for the winter. If someone wants to purchase it, we can store it in our separate Corvette facility. Um, it's a thousand dollars for the season. If you're interested, if you buy it for me, I'll throw it in. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy that. I'm just gonna go out and take a further look at the CT4 that just came in, just cause uh, we don't get to see these that often these days. So I got the key here. And as you remember with that episode I did with Rick Conti, the keys match the calipers of your vehicle, and I'm hoping that they do that for the Z06. I don't know yet. They haven't, they haven't told us, or we haven't seen any of the Z06 keys to know. There's a lot of things that we still need to find out. But this is the kind of stuff that, you know, it goes a long way. How, how easy is it for you to be able to do that? And, and how fun is that to know that they've gone to that kind of level of detail and thinking it through so that you can see all these things coming on your vehicle that come together and make one great product? So this is a V, this is not a black wing. And with the V, you're getting a lot of the performance upgrades that I think are more practical in terms of everyday use. I'm just gonna show you the motor because obviously one of the biggest things that you have on a V is an upgraded motor. The creature comforts on the inside are a little bit more sporty or there we go, there's that 2.7. This is not a truck motor, guys. It's got a ton of torque, 
And if you guys are following along in the truck world, you'll know that we did increase the torque output of the new 2.7 liter. But it, you know, I'm starting to warm up to these turbos. They are really, really, really good at making it so that when the turbos spool up, they already have a lot of that torque already readily available. I would say one thing in particular that I'm, I'm really proud of with GM is that when they do a turbo, they get rid of all the things that you hate about a turbo. And one of the biggest things is the torque being way high up in the, um, in the torque band or in, in the RPMs. On most of our Cadillacs that have a turbo, you have almost 100% of the torque available to you in the first 1500 RPM. That is nuts. Because you think of most turbo engines, at least back in the day, I remember my first time I was in a, a turbo, it was in a 930 turbo. So we weren't messing around with my first turbo experience. I'm sure there was maybe a couple of others, but I'm talking first performance car. And it was like I was Han Solo in the Millennium Falcon, just waiting for that hyperdrive to kick in and Chewbacca's in the back and he's hitting on parts and then all of a sudden, it kicked like a mule that those days are over we don't do that at gm anymore that was a good reference i like that at least you guys know that i like star wars um the the turbos are a lot more responsive and i think that that i could just picture an executive at the high levels at the ren center in detroit banging his fist on the table saying i really hate that we're going to turbos if you're going to do it i want the responsiveness of a naturally aspirated engine and they listened because when we have a turbo in our Cadillacs in particular, you don't feel that lag. It's almost immediate. And that to me negates one of the biggest reasons that people don't like turbos. Now, the second reason that this is a cool turbo is that it runs on regular pump gas. If you're getting the regular models, when you're getting a V, I would hope that you're not going to put regular gas on your vehicle. But when you get our two liter turbos, we actually specifically tune them to be able to run on regular fuel. That to me is a huge win for us that we never really talk about because at the end of the day when people are comparing fuel economy and performance and one of them is being done at a, at a fuel cost that's you know 15 percent more than the other one that's a significant cost over the course of a lifetime with a vehicle you know we're talking about two to three thousand dollars easily if you're going from regular to premium gas that's recommended or mandatory in your vehicle so that's another really big win that I think we have for the turbos that I just wanted to pass along to you guys. Now on the inside, we haven't unwrapped it yet, but we've got a black interior in here and we've got cinnamon. This is cinnamon for the stitching on here. We've got, which we will see in the Z06, a carbon fiber console coming about. And then they also have the Boast Performance Series speakers in here. And they've also got um, a carbon flash dash. See that, that's carbon flash metallic cool little Easter egg in there for the, the Corvette people. All right, let's go into the inside uh, of the showroom and show you what I've got going on. All right, this episode is getting a little long. I just want to quickly wrap this up and give you guys um, a little bit of closure on what's going on in the Corvette and also just the GM world if you're looking at purchasing a vehicle. I tried to give you guys a snapshot of what's going on at a dealership because I think it's really important to give you guys an expectation of what you should anticipate when you go to a dealership in this day and age. Um, there's been a lot of things that we've had to adapt to and right now I can say um, with a lot of pride that we are starting to get a lot better in terms of the supply chain. Um, just for example, this week I get to place three Escalades, two CT5s, a Tahoe, 11 Crew Cab Silverados, three HD trucks, two Yukons and six GMC Sierras, just to name a few. Those are the heavy hitters on my list. There's some other things as well. I'm starting to get back in action. We were averaging at least 50 cars a week at our dealership in new. And that to me was a number that I used to be very proud of and I haven't seen for a long time. And to see this kind of allotment being awarded to me gives me a lot of excitement because it means that we're starting to move in the right direction towards being back in action and normal. I really hope that everyone out there can take this insight on you know the tour of my lot and what I have going about and maybe start thinking about contacting your salesperson or if you're in Canada, contacting me um, and being proactive. Go out there and start working towards an order that you would like to receive in the spring as this is something that you can do now. You know, it's not something that you need to look at our lot and say, oh, they don't have anything. Let's just come try it again in the spring. You need to be proactive. You need to go out there and start working with somebody like me that can help you put your order together so that it'll be here perfectly timed 
for when you have your investments mature or maybe you're you're looking at a lease that's expiring and being proactive about it is gonna mean that you're gonna be rewarded for it when it comes to your resale value on your trade-in and also just making sure that you can get uh, a good deal and not have to make a sacrifice on an option. So I hope you guys gain some insight from this episode. I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada, and happy motoring.